Welcome to this week's episode of the Como 411, where our topic is Como Mentors. We are here today with our first in-studio guest, Carrie Gardner, and Carrie is the Executive Director of The Loop CID. Carrie, welcome to the Como 411. I am so glad to be here. Adonica. I'm excited to have you here. Absolutely. So for people who don't know, Carrie and I got to spend Oh, a little over a week together in Japan a couple of years ago. Fantastic. It was a fantastic yeah. time and it was great to get to know you better. Absolutely. So tell us about Como Cooks Kitchen. That's what we're really here to talk about. Yes. Como Cooks. So um, a big catalytic project we have on the business loop is the construction of our new Como Cooks Shared Kitchen. Um, it's a shared space. So it's a way to incubate businesses, mm -hmm. um, food production businesses, restaurants, food carts who can't afford to build their own kitchen. So they come in for a low monthly fee and um, they can start a business. That and is, that's what we do. That is really amazing. And I remember yes. when this was just an idea, <laughs> you yes. know, that you guys were talking yes. about. And now at this point, how many people do you have in the shared kitchen? We've got 25 people in the kitchen now. We get about four calls a week. Really? Asking about it. it we, we went ahead with this because we had done focus groups and heard um, there was a clarion call for a shared kitchen. So um, that's, what, that's what made us take this leap. That's really amazing because I know that commercial kitchen usage, like for somebody who is renting a commercial kitchen, that can be pretty expensive. Uh, it's expensive to build a kitchen, as we've just found out. It's mm -hmm. expensive to, to rent a kitchen. So um, we have a baseline rate of $170 a month and we charge you per hour. So you pay for what you need. That is okay. That's really great. Yes. That's really great and makes it really accessible to lots of people. Absolutely. Our goal is to have a welcoming, accessible and diverse kitchen. So we're, we're really trying to make it a place where a shared space where everybody feels like they, they, they can be a part of what we're doing. And tell me just really quickly, like what kinds of businesses do you have in there? Like what kinds of things so are being produced? Exciting. So uh, wood fired pizza. We've got um, a lot of tacos. We've got people that do pop-ups. We have, um, a bakery that does CBD products, mm -hmm. and we've got um, uh, empanadas and arepas and all wow. sorts of um, foods. It, it, it's just the diversity when I come into my office um, to see what people are cooking. I, I think I didn't realize that I'd have a constant um, a wave of food coming through my office. But I, it's exciting. Surely you're hungry all the time. Yes. You're hungry. Do you get to taste any other food? Yes. Everyone's like, oh, come taste sampling, testing, product testing. So no complaints there. No, I would think no complaints there yes. at all. And then you're always, you can always be like, hey, I've tried that. It's really good. Yeah. You can spread the word and let people know. Yeah. So, okay. So one thing I learned when I was visiting there the other day is you have a space for farmers. Yes. Yeah, so we have something new called the packing house. Um, we've done a lot of partnerships um, and, and grant applications for this. Mm -hmm. And so um, the big partnership was with the root seller. But the whole idea is we've got all these regional farmers who really want to have a space to do value added um, production. Okay. So you can sell uh, your produce at the farmer's market. You can take kind of seconds or excess produce and you can freeze it and bag it and then sell it to restaurants or you can distribute it to customers. Oh. So it's a way that we can help these local farmers really get more bang for their buck. Wow. Yeah. You guys have a lot going on yes. over there. You yes. have a lot going on over yeah. there. So tell me, okay, so how can somebody, if let's say there's a home cook watching right now, and this person Who is has like, a dream. Yes, like yes. I would love to be able yes. to maybe make more of my product, mass produce, sell, because you you guys allow some of your yes. people to sell. We have pop-ups in our office. It's a space where people who can't afford a brick and mortar can can actually That's have great. customers come and buy their stuff. So we um, recommend people go to comocooks.com. We have a larger website, createcomo.com, mm -hmm. where it talks about all of our shared spaces on the loop, the, the digital media studio, the makerspace, and our shared kitchen. That is really wonderful. Yes. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. It was wonderful to have you here. Yes, it wasn't long enough. We'd love to have you back in the kitchen. I would love to be mm -hmm. back. All right, and stay tuned with us because coming up on our mentors episode, coming up next, big brothers and big sisters. <laughs>
And we are back with Ann Merrifield, the executive director of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and a big John Steiger. Welcome to the Como 411. Thank you. It's so nice for you to have us here. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk to you guys. So, Ann, for anyone who might not be familiar, just give us your elevator pitch okay. for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Big Brothers Big Sisters is a, is a one on one mentoring program. We are the only evidence based, um, formalized mentoring program in the country. We are not a club, we are a one on one mentoring thing. Uh, the vision is that all of our youth reach their full potential. And we do that by matching youth in the community with a big brother or a big sister, a positive mentor, someone that can, that, that can make a difference in in a child's life. So what is the, like, what's the process for becoming a big brother or a big sister? Well, each party goes through an interview process. They, they, they have an application that they can get online and they go through a, a pretty extensive interview mm -hmm. process, right, John? Yeah. Um, and we ask for three references. We do background checks because it's all about the child safety. Sure. Uh, the, the youth, fills out an application, usually through the parents. Uh, then we match, we have, um, John wanted someone, and I know he'll talk about it, but John wanted someone that was an outdoors person. He, mm -hmm. he, John's an outdoor person himself, and so he wanted someone like that. So we try to make a really good match. Yeah. Um, and then we pull them together, they have an actual match meeting, um, and then they go out and hang out together. Uh, the, the neat thing about our program, though, is that we provide case management along the way. We call it match support. So it's not like we just throw them out there. We check in on them on a monthly basis. We give them training. We um, um, we try to provide them with different resources. We have formalized match events. Uh, we went fishing last Saturday. Gosh. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff. I like that. Mm -hmm. And, John, you're a big. How long have you been a big? It's not even a year. Not even a year. Yeah, and tell up. me, what is it? What is it about Big Brothers Big Sisters or about this program? Why did you decide to give your time in this way? It's something I've been thinking about for a long, long time. And... I kind of was concerned I'd waited too long. And in my interview process, when I met with Ann, she assured me that was not the case because mm -hmm. I'm 59 and mm -hmm. I was like, and I like, I wanted a little, little. Okay. So my little's only seven. Oh, wow. And uh, I just love little kids. And I thought maybe that's like grandpa big, you know, <laughs> but they were, they said, it's not a problem. Ann said, come on, join us. And my guy's great. And we just have a great time. And I, I always, I have kids of my own that are grown mm -hmm. and I, I realized pretty early on that it was the one on one time that really was effective with my own children, my yes. son especially, who was a difficult child, but mm -hmm. great guy, great mm -hmm. adult now. Uh -huh. And um, and I love that aspect of it. And me and my little, we you know we do really fun stuff. As Ann mentioned, we go hiking and throw the football, all the things that you normally think about, but you take the time to do it. Yeah. And Is there any particular amount of time that you require that they spend or like how much time do you spend with your to little? Spend a couple hours each time. Yeah. But we found my little and I that we pretty much go four or five hours. You know, we, we take the day. You know, we, <laughs> we, we have a good time. Yeah. We ask for four to six hours a month for at least a one year commitment. Yeah. Because any less than that is detrimental to the child. So. Yeah. I was going to ask you if there was like a, like, do you, but do you get people sometimes who love it so much oh that they. Gosh. I expect John and Jackson to be together for a long time. Well, we meet every oh, week. Yeah. Oh, wow. We meet once a week. And he wants to get together every day. I tell him once a week. <laughs> But we have we have bigs and littles that have been uh, sisters and brothers um, for golly 15, 20 years. Really? They, yes, yes. They age out of the program when they graduate from high school, but that doesn't mean that the relationship has to end. That's really, and that's the important part. The relationship is always the important part. And I know you guys, as a nonprofit, mm -hmm. you guys need to raise money. Mm -hmm. We do. And I know that you have a big event coming up. Tell us a little bit about we that. Do. Our next fundraising event is happening on the same day as the Kentucky Derby, which is uh, Saturday, May the 6th. Mm -hmm. From 3 to 6, it's at the uh, uh, CCMO, Country yes. Club of Missouri. Yes. Um, it's a fun day of wearing your fancy hat and um, and watching the race and um, raising money for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Okay, so we get to... We get to, okay, yeah. do a couple fun things. Yeah. We get to raise money, most importantly, right. for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Exactly. And we get to put on our fancy derby wear. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we get to have, we can, you can do bourbon tasting or champagne tasting. Um, you can uh, guess on which horse you think is going to win. Do you and have mint juleps? Yes, we do have mint juleps. Okay, well then, yes, we I plan yes, to be, be I plan to have my face in the place then. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Anne and John, for joining us. We truly appreciate First, your service to the community and what you guys do. Thank you for volunteering your time you uh, in such an important way. We appreciate it. And coming up next, we have Wendy from Epic. <laughs>
We are here with Wendy Wagner from Epic. Welcome to the Como 411, Wendy. Thank you for having me. Love it. <laughs> Wendy, there may be people who are not familiar with Epic. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us like what Epic stands for and what exactly Epic is? Sure. So Epic is a division of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce and it stands for Emerging Professionals in Columbia. Many people would think, see it as like the young professionals group, but we have found that you can emerge any time in your career and that does not have a limit to when you not. can do that. So not. we don't limit it in the age, but it is t generally tends to be for our younger professionals in the 21 to 40 age group. Kind yeah. Of group. Yeah. And that's young mm -hmm. ish. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the older end of that. <laughs> that's okay. That's, we're emerging. Yes. We're emerging. Always. We're emerging. And tell me what kinds of activities Epic does. What kinds of, I know you guys do a lot to partner young professionals with people who have are more seasoned. So mm -hmm. what kind of things do you do at Epic? So we have some of the more traditional lunch and learns. We have a community engagement breakfast. We do those events quarterly. We also mm -hmm. have mixers. You have to go out and have some fun. You do. And, and mingle and meet people. Um, we found that Epic is a really easier way to tow into the chamber, especially if you're younger. If you've been to a quarterly membership breakfast, that's a very large room full of a lot of people. It and is. it can be really overwhelming, yes. especially if you're younger or starting out in your career. So we find that Epic is that easier, smaller group of like-minded individuals like age, and we can really just engage in the community in a different way and start to get involved in the chamber. One of the best things we've started in the last few years since COVID was a mentor program. Mm -hmm. um, it was started and then we've actually had a few of our executive committee members have really grown the program in wonderful ways. Um, you are paired, when you apply as an EPIC member, you are paired with somebody, committee members oh. actually go out and read your application and look what you're looking for and personally try to find somebody that will work for you and individualize that experience. So you're not just kind of getting pooled, you know, put together with somebody out of a pool, they're finding the right fit for what you're looking for. That is for really, in I did not know that. Mm -hmm. And that is very interesting. That makes it a lot more uh, customized, kind of specialized. Mm -hmm. So I get to tell you as the person who's applying, this is the industry I'm in, like this may be what I'm looking for. And you guys actually pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And match me with somebody that seems like they could be a match. Right. That would work with you. And because some people may be like, I'm in human resources, but I really have this side interest that I really want to know more about. So where another group might have said, oh, you're in human resources. We're going to put you with somebody yes. in human resources. The group that puts them together really look at that application and say, oh, but this person would be, they have some skill sets that I think would be really good as they grow in their career. So. Oh gosh, that's really, I like that. That's mm -hmm. very exciting. And so tell me how, so if I'm watching this show mm -hmm. and I'm an emerging professional and I would like to join Epic, like what does that look like? Like, can you come check out an event first? Like I always wonder that, you know, when you're joining an organization, mm -hmm. you're like, what if I joined it right away? And it's not a fit for me. Like, can they come and check out something? Absolutely. So if you are not a member of Epic, you can come to our uh, non-members only events. We do have a few exclusive members sure. only events, but if it's just like one of the mixers or the breakfasts, you can come. It's a little bit more expensive than if you're a member, you do get a member discount mm -hmm. coming to one of the lunches. But you can just come and enjoy the event and see what we're all about. We highly recommend it. You can find us um, on the Chamber's website in the event calendar that they have. We also have a web page on there, but you can also find us on Facebook. That's another really great place that we try to post our events so you can come see what we're all about and meet us. That's awesome. And you did say that you guys do certain events quarterly. Mm -hmm. So even if I've just missed something, possibly know that there's something else coming up pretty soon. Right. We have a community engagement breakfast coming up in May and a our spring mixer coming or excuse me summer mixer it'll be summer in june it so will be summer i don't know where this year has gone i don't <laughs> either can you believe it no <laughs> it's, it's very hard to believe wendy thank you so much for joining us and filling us in on epic we might not know about it but it is emerging professionals in columbia exactly you thank got you. it thank you for joining us thank you <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the Como 411, where we talked all about mentors. Thank you to our special guests. We appreciate having you guys here. And we hope that somewhere in this episode, you heard something that inspires you to get out in the community, get engaged and mentor someone who might want your experience in their life. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.